Today is going to be fun. We are going to look at eight common productivity myths and bust them. Let's do it. Myth number one. Multitasking is the key to getting more done. Multitasking is finally, but slowly, losing its positive reputation and being recognized as an enemy of productivity. When people multitask, productivity is highly affected, not in a good way, and several studies confirm that. Despite of still being listed as a requirement in most current job openings, multitasking actually hurts employee productivity. That's not good for the person and certainly not good for the organization either. In reality, multitasking is one of the worst productivity killers. When you try to do too many things at once, your brain is forced to constantly switch between tasks, which leads to a decrease in productivity, increased stress levels, an increase in mistakes, and last not least, a reduction of productivity by up to 40%. Instead, you should focus on one task at a time and give it your full attention. You will find that you get more done in less time and produce higher quality work while also feeling less stressed. Myth number two says that working longer hours means that you are more productive. This couldn't be further from the truth. Working long hours may make you feel like you're being productive, but it's decreasing your productivity even though you're constantly busy. A study from Stanford University shows that productivity per hour declines sharply when a person works more than 50 hours a week. After 55 hours, productivity drops so much that putting in more hours would be completely pointless. So one has to wonder, what is the point of doing overtime? Taking breaks is essential to maintaining productivity. When you give your brain a chance to rest and recharge, you can return to your work refreshed fresh and more focused. How often to take breaks and how long they need to be varies from person to person and also depends on what it actually is that you are doing. If you have not found your own rhythm yet, I suggest starting with 25 to 30 minutes of focused work and then taking a 5 to 10 minutes break. Adapt from there. The same is true for taking a vacation. Once again, studies indicate that our performance drops dramatically when we work for extended periods without a proper break. Taking care of yourself is essential to maintaining productivity and achieving success in the long run. This includes taking breaks, eating healthy, getting enough sleep and taking vacation days to recharge. Doing so is going to improve your own productivity, which is good for yourself and the company you work for. It's also going to lower your stress levels, which helps you stay physically healthy and it's going to keep you mentally healthy as well. Okay, on to number three. Procrastination is just a part of your creative process. Well, I admit it would be great if this were the case. However, it's not. While some people believe procrastination helps them to be more creative, it's just a productivity killer. This misperception stems largely, but not exclusively, from the belief that consciously delaying a task because you think this delay will help you eventually is procrastination. But it's not. Procrastination is the voluntary delay of action despite expecting to be worse off for the delay. Let me repeat it because it's a bit confusing. If you delay a task knowing that this delay is going to help you perform the task better, this is not procrastination. If you don't start working on the next task at hand because you just don't want to, but you do know that the outcome or the result is going to be worse, then this is procrastination. On a side note, it turns out that only roughly 20% of people really suffer from procrastination and everybody else is just, like me, a bit lazy. Here are some short tips to overcome procrastination. First, focus is key. Start by making a simple to-do list with a deadline for each item. Then pick just one item and start working on that one. Which brings us to number two. Just start. Take this task and start working on it. If you feel overwhelmed, try the five minute miracle, which is number three in this short list of tips. The five minute miracle involves asking yourself, what action can I take in less than five minutes today that moves this forward even tiniest bit? Once you have identified a small action, set a five minute timer and spend these five minutes working on the task highly focused. Research shows that once you start something, you're much more likely to finish it. And small action is still action. Five minutes can make all the difference. Now, these are just some quick tips. I'm going to publish a video dedicated to the topic of procrastination and how to deal with it as soon as I actually manage to motivate myself. Myth number four, the idea that checking your email or instant messages constantly throughout the day and sometimes at night is necessary to stay on top of things. Once again, it's really not necessary. To understand a bit better why people keep doing this, reading every email and every message as soon as they arrive, here are some very common 
motivations. First, they might be afraid of getting behind and having to deal with too many messages simultaneously later. Second, and let's be honest, it is easier to deal with distractions like messages and emails than productive work activities. Third, they truly want to be conscientious. Ironically, while they may seem so, they are actually less productive and less attentive. Also, responding slightly slower can make you seem important because you are too busy with real work and cannot check every message immediately. Think about it. Fourth, the fear of missing out might actually drive them. And while there is certainly the risk of missing some time-sensitive opportunities, I would argue that it is a very small one and not worth the negative effects of constantly checking messages. Myth number five real men or women do everything themselves. Many people still believe that not delegating tasks is a sign of strength and independence, although very often it's more a sign of insecurity and maybe a lack of leadership qualities, but that's a different story. That belief is not just wrong, but potentially harmful. Not delegating tasks can lead to burnout and decreased productivity. It is important to recognize when you need help and delegate tasks to others who might be better suited for them. And it's not even just about needing help and being more productive. Delegating to others can also empower these people, make them feel trusted and appreciated and give them a chance to succeed and improve. And here's number six. It's all about the obviously wrong idea that downtime or waiting time has to be a waste of time. I mean, it's true if you really don't do anything, but you know, just stand or sit around. But of course, you don't have to do that. In fact, downtime or waiting time can be a great opportunity to catch up on reading, listening to a podcast or engaging in other activities that help you relax and recharge. Personally, I use the Kindle app on my phone whenever I need to wait for a few minutes. Instead of falling down the scroll hole on social media, I use these few minutes at a time to do some reading. You would be surprised by how much reading I can actually get done that way. The next one is a nice one. Myth number seven seems to be supported by one of the greatest geniuses of mankind. Allegedly, Albert Einstein said, if a cluttered desk is a sign of a cluttered mind, of what then is an empty desk a sign? Good question, in theory. Many people think that working in a messy environment is a sign of creativity and productivity. There are at least two problems with that. First, Einstein actually never said that. And second, multiple studies suggest that cluttered desks or a generally messy environment are bad for productivity. For what it's worth, this is also my personal experience. The more stuff you have around you, the easier it is to get distracted. I strongly recommend keeping your desk free of anything you don't need. Again, my personal approach to this is I do not have a single item on my desk that I don't use at least once per week and have very few items that I don't use on a daily basis. Everything else is organized in drawers, cabinets and somewhere on shelves. In this context, here is a bonus tip. Ever since working from home, I do not have a commute that used to help me get my mind off work topics and be fully present in private life. So I created a virtual commute. For me, this means planning the next day, closing all applications, cleaning up my desk and turning my PC off. This very small routine works like a charm for me. And there is the additional benefit of coming back to a neat desk the next morning, which, let's be honest, always feels good at the start of the day. Do you spend a lot of your time in meetings, perhaps even double or triple booking your calendar? Then you fell victim to myth number eight. Constantly being in meetings is necessary to stay on top of things. Fun fact, whoever I ask tells me they don't like being in meetings, they are inefficient, usually badly prepared and often lack actionable outcome. And yet the same people often find themselves in meeting after meeting. So if nobody wants these meetings, who is setting them up all the time? It is no surprise that overloading on meetings can be a major time waste that eats up valuable time in your day. So once again, here are a few quick tips to help with that. First, reduce the number of meetings, bit of a duh, but very effective. Try to schedule only necessary ones. Second, keep these meetings focused. Make sure they have either an agenda, and this does not have to be a five-pager. This can be like three bullet points, or at the very least, some well-defined goals. Make sure everybody who attends the meeting has the same expectations of what needs to be achieved at the end of it. Third, keep them short. Very few meetings really need to take longer than 30 minutes. Make this the default duration for any future meeting and extend them only if there are really good reasons to do so. Fourth, keep them small. If you or any other potential participant can neither bring nor get value, do not participate or do not invite them. This would be a rule that I would propagate throughout my whole team and organization to make sure people get it and don't participate in meetings that would only be a waste of time for them. And number five, keep a buffer. Do not schedule back-to-back -back meetings. I plan 
spend at least 15 minutes between meetings. This time is not to be used for overruns because we want to end our meetings on time obviously, but for any quick post meeting activities or simply for taking a break. By busting these stubborn productivity myths, you will be able to increase your productivity, achieve your goals and live a happier, more fulfilled life. I hope this helps you avoid some of the productivity pitfalls out there. Now, this is certainly not a comprehensive list, so if you want to add something or have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you found this video even remotely helpful, perhaps drop a like and subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to make sure you won't miss the next videos. All this should allow you to save time and be more productive. However, there are always more things we can do to increase our productivity, which you should really check out in this growing list of productivity tips and methods. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.